Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about weak references in Python and what they're used for, as well as a few of the fun little things in the weak ref module. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so the main, well, <laughs> the way I think about the weak reference module is it's a way to sort of bypass reference counting in Python. Um, let me just give you a short little demo of reference counting so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Uh, we're going to make a class, and we're going to give it a del method. This is the method that gets called while the object is garbage collected. Normally, you don't implement these yourselves because um, you know the garbage collection can happen at any sort of time, and it's not really predictable. It's not really a destructor as you would think about it in other languages, um, but you know, it, it kind of works like that. Um, but let's do, I'll just say by and do self. And if we make one of these objects, and actually I'm gonna show you a little quirk of the interpreter. I've actually done another video on this already, so uh, I will link that in the description. Uh, if we construct this object, uh, you would think that there would be nothing referencing this after this statement, and it would you know, garbage collect it immediately. Uh, but we see that that doesn't happen. We print out the wrapper here, and this object still lives. And the reason it still lives is in, um, in CPython at least, or at, at least in the interactive interpreter, uh, the last expression is stored in a special underscore variable. And so you can see this object lives on. Uh, now, if I were to make some other expression such as one, you'll see that the reference count fell to zero and it got garbage collected. Um, and to demonstrate this a little bit further, if we assign this to a value and we use sys.getRefCount, which is a way to ask about the ref count of an object, uh, you'll see it actually returns two, which is interesting here. Uh, one of the references is this assignment here. So this is one reference to this object, so it has a ref count of two. Uh, but actually, when we pass it in as a parameter into this function, the parameters of a function have a hard reference to the value as well, so it increments to two. Uh, now, of course, if we assign this to something else, so if we do d equals c, so another reference here, uh, you'll see that we now have a reference count of three. And that's stable if we do this a bunch of times. If we unassign d here, we will decrease the reference count back to two. And of course, if we unassign c, uh, we've you know, sent, sent the reference count to zero, and that will cause the object to get garbage collected. And of course, this is all C Python specific. The garbage collector works differently in PyPy and other Python implementations as well. Okay, so now that we have kind of a base idea of what reference counting is, uh, a weak reference allows you to create an assignment to an object, but not increment the reference count. So we go back and make our same uh, example here. We make a C, we implement, import the weak ref module, and we make another uh, <laughs> assignment. But in this case, we use weak ref dot ref of C. Uh, and if we do sys dot get ref count, it will still be two, even though we sort of have a C object here. Uh, you can see that it is a weak ref that points to this particular C object. And the way the weak ref object works by default is if you do, if you call it, uh, you will either get the object back or you will get back none if the object has been collected. Uh, so for instance, if we do that same C equals none here, uh, actually we can even assign it to some other value just to differentiate between getting none back and getting that value back. So if we assign C here, uh, which should have gotten collected. Why did it not get collected? <laughs> this is still going to give us our object. Oh, it, it, because um, because we have an expression, right? <laughs> when I called this expression here, it stored this in underscore, which is super confusing. Let me let me redo this demo where I don't actually uh, store it in the underscore accidentally. So we'll do c equals c. We'll do d equals weak ref dot ref of c, and we will print the call of d. This way we don't store it in that uh, underscore variable. And now if we assign C to five, this will cause C to get garbage collected. And if we try and call D again, we'll get back none. Uh, and so this, this call method is how you explicitly access that underlying uh, object. And this can be useful in kind of two main cases that I've seen. One is to create caches, because uh, caches are often global variables and Naively, if you just stick things into them and uh, you know they get garbage collected later and they're no longer referenced in the program, you naturally have a memory leak in this global cache. But if you use a weak ref, uh, they don't keep that, you know, it doesn't keep that object resident because it doesn't have a strong reference. Uh, the other case that I've seen is to 
improve the performance of garbage collection in the case of circular references. Let me just demo that really quickly. Now, in Python, and or at least C Python, other implementations probably also have this as well. Uh, the garbage collector is smart enough to garbage collect circular references, uh, but it won't do it immediately. It has to do kind of a deeper garbage collection. Uh, so let me just show you an example of that. If we make a C object and we assign C.C equal to itself, so we have a cycle here. So C.C.C.C.C is you know, still referencing this object here. Um, you know, do an expression to get rid of the underscore variable. Uh, and if we assign C to none, you'll see that it's not garbage collected immediately. And uh, we actually have to trigger a deeper garbage collection, which normally happens as part of program flow, uh, but you can trigger it directly by doing gc.collect. And you'll see here that gc.collect was able to find that reference cycle and clean it up, deleting this object, even though nothing actually referenced this object anymore except for itself. And so that's kind of a circular reference. Now you can uh, you know, avoid the circular reference by using a weak ref. And we're actually gonna use a different weak ref object, uh, a different weak ref um, method or function this time. We're gonna use weak ref .proxy, which means that you no longer need to do this call to access the underlying weak ref. You will either get uh, you know, an attribute error if it's collected, or you will get, um, the, it'll proxy to the attributes of the actual object. So if you do c.c again, uh, and let's just do c.x equals one just so that we have something to show that it works. And we are gonna do c.c equals weak ref dot proxy of c. And so we can still do this same silly uh, infinite chaining because it's a, a circular object. But now if we were to clear this reference here by setting c to none, it should get immediately collected. Yeah, you'll see we got immediately collected. And that's because this reference here, this attribute reference, was not a strong reference. So it didn't keep the object alive. And the garbage collector was able to clean this object up much, much easier. Now I'm going to show you, uh, you know, that that's sort of the circular reference part of this. Let me also show you the caching part of this. And for that, oh, sorry, we're partially through the weak ref docs. Uh, for that, we're going to look at either weak key dictionary or weak value dictionary. Um, I've actually used, I think it was weak key dictionary. Yeah, I actually used weak key dictionary, <laughs> which is funny to say, uh, at Yelp for a per request cache, because uh, the cache is a ephemeral object, but you tend to you tend to generate derivative data from the from the request all the time. And so if you make a weak key dictionary that is keyed on the request and it has you know some expensive computed value as the value. Um, you know, as the request cycle ends, it will get purged out of this dictionary automatically. So for that, if we do uh, uh, some dictionary equals weak ref dot weak key. Uh, let's do weak value dictionary just because this C is not hashable. Uh, weak value, actually, is it hashable? It might be default hashable. Hash. Yes, okay, it is default hashable. So we can make a weak key dictionary. Um, <laughs> you can see it got immediately collected. Cool. Uh, so dictionary equals weak ref dot weak key dictionary. And let's say we assigned one of these and maybe we put it into our dictionary uh, as some value. Uh, and, you know, further down in the code, we accessed this and we're able to, uh, you know, see see that there is a object in there. Uh, but if this got collected, let's see. Actually, we can do dict dot items and you'll. Uh, see everything that's that's live in this dictionary. If we were to assign C to none, causing it to get garbage collected, why didn't it get garbage collected? <laughs> Where's the reference? Uh, uh, oh, because this is this is our expression, right? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I got to remember the un this the magical underscore variable. I'm glad I pointed that out at the beginning because it would have been way more confusing. Okay, let's do this demo again. <laughs> Uh, okay, make a dictionary. Uh, diction. Oh, oh, whoops. Dictionary. Sorry, I did a control Z there. Uh, and we assign C to two. Right. <laughs> we need to make a C again. We assign it to two. And if we print list dict.items instead of 
just having the interpreter show us that, you'll see that we have this, and now if we assign C to none, it will get garbage collected, and this dictionary automatically cleans up those objects inside of it. So you can kind of depend on, you have a dependable dictionary cache, uh, but it doesn't keep the objects alive. Anyway, that's that's kind of the basics of weak ref. Uh, it's a way to keep a reference that is a non-strong reference, which doesn't keep the object alive. Uh, hopefully this was useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.